Good evening, this is Edward and Anne, and it's Sunday, September, uh, October 11th, 2020. We've all been in a time of really looking to the Lord during this Feast of Tabernacles that technically ended Friday evening, although we tend to kind of slide it over through the weekend and add a couple days to it. So for us, technically, this evening uh, it ends. And we've been looking to the Lord for what is the next step. What do we need to do? What are we missing? A great word came right around the Day of Atonement, and that was called worship. And another great word came a couple of days into the Feast of Tabernacles. Um, You are, therefore I am. Both excellent words. And both really positioning us. But uh, tonight's word is probably the most important word to come in a long time. Whether or not we feel goosebumps or we feel anything uh, is immaterial. Uh, We need to hear this word because there has to be a change uh, at the root of our being on how we proceed forward. Now here again, this is a word for Anne and I. If it doesn't apply to you, then you'll know. But this uh, is the word that we received uh, just about a half an hour ago. And we were reflecting back on the days of the churches that we have been involved with over the years. And... You know, as God would begin to speak, many would begin to flock and come, and churches would grow. And then you'd, before long, find yourself with a mixed multitude, those that really had a drive to walk with him and and those that just loved the feeling of his presence, but didn't really have a drive to to really walk with them. And that's um, <clears throat> been a problem all throughout the church age, is the mixed multitude. And so we began to reflect back at many of the prophecies and words and visions that have come, expressly one that is in the book of Job. Not, I'm sorry, Job. The book of Joel um, I don't have the scripture handy, but Joel references this great and mighty army that God raises up. And they don't break ranks. And they don't thrust one another through. And out of their mouths proceeds, you know, a flame and behind them a desolate wilderness. And it paints a, an awesome picture of this mighty army of God in holy array. And it's not just one or two or ten, but it's this army, hundreds, thousands, that have been raised up. And and so, just in reflecting, kind of looking at that and saying, Lord, We're so far deep into the kingdom and into the time of the end and at the doorway of entering into resurrection life. Has this happened? Did we miss something? How could we have missed anything? But oftentimes the word has come I'll wait till this is over. Joel 2. 
Okay, oftentimes the word has come that you're looking for a sign in the wrong realm. That word has come off and on here, you know, just sporadically over the last 40 years. And I don't think when it first began to come, that we even understood what God was talking about. And after a while, you become numb. You know, God says, you're looking for a sign in the wrong realm, and but you don't quite understand what it is he's saying. But I think now we do. When the Lord says, okay, you know, I'll just reference some things here. We're just talking. This is family tonight. We're sitting around the table. So, you know, no big deal. But well, let me let me catch my thought here. <laughs> I just lost my thought. All right, I better catch him back. Those thoughts can be squirrely things, you know? So give me just a second here. Hmm. Strange. The Lord, we draw your anointing. We're not allow, we're not about to allow the enemy to come in and take the word or to block it at all. But we're trying to understand where we are, what we're missing, what we're not seeing, what we're not understanding and grasping. Well, I don't... Uh, where did I leave off, Anne? That's what you had said, where we're going. Okay, well, we'll just kind of pick up here. That, that was just weird. But um, <clears throat> here again, we're just talking. This is family, and um, you know, we'll just lay it out on the table like we see it. But the problem is, and has always been, that there is so much unfolding in the realm of spirit that we have not been able to identify. When the Lord has come a number of times and says you're so much further into the kingdom than you understand. And yet we're looking down here for something to manifest. We're looking for a sign. You know. And God's not going to, to give a sign because something is happening but it's on a different level. And so going back to Joel, this great army that God has raised up. Have we missed it? Or is it still coming? Is, this, is God still going to raise up this army? I mean, so much of the church age is out there saying, yes, I believe, I believe. But no, it's not right now. But yes, it's going to come, I do believe. And it always stays there. Out in the front is a future tense reality, never really coming to a realization of what is here presently right in your midst. The kingdom is right here. Like I said in the book, out of the book of Thomas, Thomas you know, and Jesus were talking, and the kingdom that you seek is here, but men see it not. It says, it says, the kingdom of God is spread over the face of the earth, and men do not see it. The days of fulfillment here are spread across the earth, and men do not see it. We're in the days of tremendous fulfillment and release, and we do not see it, because we're looking for a sign in the wrong realm. Fulfillment 
is not I'm not going to say, well, let me, let me fray, be careful with this. Fulfillment is not on the physical plane. The fulfillment of what we seek is not going to, at first, manifest on the physical plane. This is not where it's happening. Fulfillment is a spiritual realm reality. And always the word has come, you know, come up higher. It's like uh, the book of um, Revelations, uh, chapter 4, verse 1. After these things I looked, and behold, a door standing open in heaven. And the first voice which I had heard, like the sound of a trumpet, speaking with me, and it said, John, come up here. John, come up just a little higher. <laughs> I'm paraphrasing. And I will show you what must take place after these things. And immediately I was in the Spirit. And behold, a throne was standing in heaven and one sitting on the throne. How many times the word has come over the years, come up higher, come up higher, come up higher, come up higher. Oh, I can't, Lord. I can't come up any higher. I'm just too earth-bound. And he says, yes, but I am applying the fire and I'm going to burn those shackles off and you're going to soar in the heavens. We're looking for a sign in the wrong realm. People are saying, well, you know, when's this going to happen? You know, when are these judgments going to happen? When are these, you know, and it's already happening. But we're not here, but we're not on the right level. We were reflecting, as I had mentioned at the beginning of this word, we were reflecting back at some churches that we'd been involved with. And I thought... that it was almost impossible to see the promises that were dangling over the heads of these people ever come to pass because the work of the cross had not gone deep enough and everyone was looking for fulfillment on the natural plane and they're working things out and they're doing this and they're doing that for Jesus. And this isn't where it's happening. And yet no one had eyes to see the realm of spirit, the realm of reality, of really what was happening. Virtually no one had eyes to see. And it would take, and at this point, I don't know who has eyes to see of those whom we knew or had been around. I don't know if any do. And you get all these congregations of all these people. Here's the army of God. It's that congregation of 10,000 over there. Fulfillment will never be on that level. Maybe at some point there'll be some something that we'll see on the natural plane. But the real level of release is in the realm of spirit. It is in the sun's coming up higher. The sons are caught up to the throne. That's how it goes in Revelation, was it 12? Wherever, wherever it is. They're caught up. There is so much that's happening in the realm of spirit right now, in the realm of fulfillment, in the realm of functioning. 
while we're walking around like paupers, we don't realize that we're actually entering into the days of judgment, the days of fulfillment. But it is a spirit realm reality. It involves your spirit. And God is sanctifying you, spirit, soul, and body. But the soul and body is a little bit behind here. And so there can be that weariness that, you know, uh, hope deferred makes a heart sick because you're looking down here. Where is it, O God? Where is it? And God is saying, it's up here. Come up higher. Just come up higher. Understand, you know, it's not going to be down here. And every once in a while you have a meeting with God and then he's gone. Lord, where did you go? I went up a little higher and I'm beckoning you. Come up higher. And the more you reach for that, the deeper and the more intense the fire of God will be. Because the soul, flesh, nature is not going to make the transition into the spirit. It's harder for a rich man to enter the kingdom, you know, than uh, however that scripture goes. Anyway, I'm kind of butchering up the word here tonight a little bit. It reminds me of an appearing we had a few years back. You guys always like a good story. Once again, this was a a group we had met with that were from a different world. And they were struggling because their leader had passed on and they were like a boat that was adrift and they were looking for guidance. And there was this child, maybe 12, 10, 12, maybe something like that. She was blind from birth. But God had given her eyes to see in the spirit. And and, and the elders were saying, we, we can't see anything. We, you know, it's the heavens are bronze. And she said, I see them. I see those that have gone on. They're right here with us. And the word is, you just have to come up a little higher and you will see them too. It was just a short appearing exposure. And it, uh, I understood the challenge, I, as I do even with what we face. But it, it has a lot more meaning even now than it did when it first came. Because what we seek is on a different plane and it is not down here. So how do we get from point A to point B? Well, I think the big part of it is just to understand what's being required and where we have to where we have to get to here we have got to come up higher we've been giving ourselves to the work of the cross we continue to do so but what we had of god yesterday isn't enough to make it through the next day and we've said that before god gives you the manna of one day and it's fine but it's not enough for the day that follows. God has met us on this natural plane and we've experienced various things and we've seen to a measure. But God is going up higher and he's calling us, come up higher and sit with me and I will show you what things must take place. And certainly, 
our spirit is intrinsically involved in everything that's happening right now, but the awareness on our part as sons needs to come up several notches. How do we do this? Well, to each one, you have to find that answer within yourself. But to at least identify it and say, okay, I understand the game plan. The game plan is fulfillment is not destined to be down here on the physical level. Not that at some point it won't be. But fulfillment is on a different level. Our abiding is on a different level. The army of God, the book of Joel, it's on a different level. And we haven't perhaps seen it in that context. And that just kind of came out of our conversation this evening when we began to reflect back at, at these many people that we've known that have been around us or others in, in, in the churches of the day of the church age. And you think, Lord, could this group of people of 2,000 or this group of people of 5,000 or 1,000, could they have ever really attained the promise? Could they have ever really walked as a unit of one? And the answer really is no, I don't think so. I think in some ways it was doomed from the beginning uh, f for that to happen unless it was preceded by a deep work of the cross that, that kept going and going and the people kept pressing into it and embracing it. That's the only path that we've known So here we are at the end of the Feast of Tabernacles and we reviewed, okay, Lord, we've been talking about all that you are within us and identifying that and that is who you are in us. We are, therefore, you are, Lord. Now, where do we go from here? Where do we go from here? Because right after that word, you took off. Seemingly, you took off, went on vacation. I don't know where you went. You didn't leave a forwarding address. <laughs> but that very subtle beckoning, if you stop and listen very quietly, you just hear that word come up a little higher and you'll see me come up just a little higher and it will all make sense. And then, you know, we've all experienced this to some extent. In a small measure, you, you might have a breakthrough and you see him. And then, of course, he'll, he'll depart again as he continues to beckon you up higher and higher. That is, that is really our answer. What we seek is here. And men see it not. The kingdom is here, and we see it not. The indwelling of the Father and Son are within us, and we see it only in a measure. What's happening in the realm of spirit is happening now. This is the day of judgment. This is the day of finality. This is where it all happens. This is the place. But we haven't really been able to recognize it that clearly. But that's changing as we come up higher. So we lose this tonight. We lose this short meditation. Lord, we come up higher. By your grace, we are coming up higher. Nothing makes sense on this level. 
We're not discouraged and we're not even perplexed. It's just this is not the level where it's happening. And true, Lord, we have been looking for a sign in the wrong realm. Because everything first begins in the realm of the Spirit. And then it has its way to shake itself down to the physical and the soul. How do we leave the, fir- the Feast of Tabernacles, Lord? We, we've had such expectation of the completion of what you're doing and the takeover of all that you are within us and that transformation that comes. In some ways, Lord, we feel a little ripped off, or can. But now you're saying, we have it. It's here, but we aren't going to be able to embrace it or obtain it on this level. We have to come up higher. And Lord, even if we don't know how to do it, just the fact that you are identifying it is enough for us to just become constant reminders and say, okay, Lord, I know this is the answer because you've said it. I know that we have it. I know that we are the army of God, but it's not being fulfilled on this natural plane. The word says you have everything. You know, God has blessed you with everything, you know, um, according to life and godliness. Yes. But you know what? You don't ca- that check cannot be cashed in in the natural plane. You've got to take that to the bank of heaven And when you cash it, they pay you out in spiritual funds on a spirit level. That's been a difficult thing when the Lord comes and says, what you seek, it's already here. It's already here. In fact, he says, what you seek, you've already already done this. Well, what, am I coming back around for round two, Lord? I don't understand. Because everything is happening and unfolding in the realm of spirit. Well, that could sound like a cop-out. Well, Lord, I want my pie on the plate. And you're putting the pie up there in the clouds. Well, you can have it on the plate, but you have to go up there and get it first. Oh, really? So I can have my pie on the plate, but you're saying I'm going to have to go up there and get it. Well, what's involved? Well, you have to come up higher. And as you come up higher, you're changed and transformed. That becomes your place of living and abiding. And then you will be granted access to and fro to come and go at your leisure. Well, Lord, you you gave me a word a while back. I'm going to be able to come and go. Yes. But the first thing you got to do is you got to come up higher. I forgot to give you those last two. Come up higher. And then you can go. Well, I, I don't know how to do that. Well, you don't have to. As long as you know that this is what I'm requiring, then we link hands together. You stay in my, you stay in my face, and I certainly will stay in your face, and we'll see this happen. The promise of sonship is not meant to just dangle out and torment the sons until nobody enters fulfillment, and another generation passes away, and then in another fifty years God raises up another group of people and gives them some promises so that they can contend and believe, and they too can then pass away. That's not how it's coming down. That's not the promise. That's not what God has in mind. He has in mind that we break the tape, but we won't break the tape on this level. We have to come up higher. That's where we break the tape. Because everything is happening right now. 
everything that we're believing for, it's happening. Well, this will be a to-be-continued word because we're in the process of grabbing hold of this and really of understanding why there can be no other fulfillment at Feast of Tabernacles except this, that we are to come up higher. And that in the very word that he gives, come up higher, is the grace to be able to do it and achieve it. Lord, you give us grace. We, we can't do it. We acknowledge. But I know that your grace is sufficient. And so, with the word comes the grace for us to enter in to this, for the grace to be able to come up higher, literally. This is the fulfillment of tabernacles. We're not looking for tabernacles next year to see, okay, well, maybe God will fulfill his promises now. What a terrible trap to get caught into. God has fulfilled it here now. And now he says, come up higher. Because it's all waiting for you right here, right now. And Lord, we rest in the fact that you are giving us the grace to do and to become and, and to fully embrace this. So I think that's all that we wanted to talk about tonight as we end the Feast of Tabernacles. We don't end it wondering what happened. But we enter it as God is launching us into a whole new world. And we will not be denied, nor will we be discouraged, nor will we be distracted, nor we will allow ourselves to be diluted or to go and give our, our, our oil to any other. I just say, Lord, yes, we believe. I believe. The time has been cut short. And that was the word. You know, if the, if, if the time wasn't cut short, no flesh would be saved alive. There can be a lot of interpretations to that, but I'll tell you, it has uh, a certain ring of truth about the timeline that we're in now. So, Lord, we come up higher. Because that is what we determine. We, we just make that decision and that commitment. Your grace is sufficient. We come up higher. And we keep repeating that, meditating it, prophesying it, whatever is going to work. But we're making the shift tonight. Not looking for another tabernacles to fulfill the indwelling of the Godhead within the sons, and the subsequent transformation of resurrection life. I say, Lord, it is here now. It is here now. You have said it's here, right in our midst. We're so close, we could barely touch it. So I say yes. But I also understand, Lord, it's on a different level. It's a challenging word because it requires everything out of us to stand and embrace and let go of our conditionings and thoughts of what we felt fulfillment would be. But I declare tonight is our day of fulfillment, our day of change. Amen. Anna and I send our blessings to all of you. Amen. <laughs>